rational exponents in the radical form. So where a is to the power of n and it is the mth root, we can write this in exponent form as equal to a to the power of n over m, right? So that is the exponent n and this is the mth root. The question is, write in exponent form and then evaluate. So let's first write them all in exponent form. So we have 8 square and 1 third cube root of 8 square. So we could write this as 8 to the power of 2 over 3, right? Similarly, we can write this is square root of 4 cube. So that means 4 cube square root. Do you see that? Now here we have minus 27. Now minus is not squared, correct? Only 27 squared. So think about it like this, right? So it's kind of better if I write this as minus 27 square and to the power of 1 over 3. It's kind of technical because minus is not square, right? Now here in this case, minus is outside, so I'll prefer to write minus and then 125, yes, to the power of 2 over 3, right? 2 over 3. Now remember, only 125 is to the power of 2 over 3. 2 is square, right? And third root. Minus is outside the radical term. Now you need to do the same thing for these four expressions, which is minus 8 square cube root of minus 8 square, fifth root of minus 32 square, so minus is also squared here, cube root of 1 to the power of 5, and cube root of 10 to the power of 6. Okay. Now let's try to evaluate these exponents. So when we say 8 square cube root, then you have an option. You can either do square first or the cube root first. It's better to do cube root, we'll be dealing with smaller numbers. That is the whole idea, right? So what is cube root of 8? Cube root of 8 is 2, right? So we get 2 as cube root of 8, and 2 square is left for us, and 2 square is 4, so we get 4 as our answer, right? Do you see that? So basically what I did was, first I did cube root of 8. Let me write it down here. So first I did, let me write like this now. First I did cube root of 8 and then I squared it. Do you understand? Cube root of 8 is 2 and then I squared it. I hope that's clear, right? Let me do the next one and show you my steps. So first I'm doing square root of 4. So what I'm doing first is 4 to the power of half. That is square root of 4 and then I'll cube it. Square root of 4 is 2, right? So I can write this as 2 cube and 2 cube is 8. So 8 is my answer. Correct? I hope. You understand the trick. Now in this particular case, what I'm doing is, I'm doing, now remember one thing, when I square this 27 and then do cube root, it is going to be a negative number, right? So this answer will actually be negative. Now cube root of 27 is minus 3, right? And minus 3 squared is 9. So that is what we are getting. So let's do first square of 27. You, you could write square of 27 as like this. So it is minus is right there. Minus is not squared. And what we have here is 27 times 27. Okay. And we are doing cube root of this. Think, think about it like this. Now what is cube root of 27? Cube root of 27 is 3. Correct? So we get minus of 3 times 3 which is minus 9. So that is what we get here. Okay. Now the next one is 125 square and the cube root with the negative sign. It's better to do cube root first. What is the cube root of 125? It is 5. So we can write this as 5 square and then answer is minus 25. So that is how we can solve these. So sometimes they are tricky. I like you to go through these solutions once again and try to understand what are we trying to do and how are we trying to solve it. So let me summarize it. When you have 8 square and then cube root, it is your option. You can do square first also and then cube root. If you do square first, for example, let's do square first. If I do square of 8, then it becomes 64, right? And then I do cube root of 64. Do you see that? 
cube root of 64 is also 4. You get the same answer, which is equal to 4. So you can follow that path also, correct? Now here, for example, I did square root first and then cube. You could have cube root. First you do 4 cube, right? So what is 4 cube? That means 4 times 4 times 4. This is an alternate way. And then you do square root, correct? So 4 times 4 is 16 and 16 times 4 is 64. So you get 64 squared. Do you see that? And square root of 64 is 8. So you get the same answer. Do you get the idea? You get the same answer. The only thing is, in this method, you get you are dealing with bigger numbers all the time. But when you do cube root first, or the square root first, then you're dealing with smaller numbers. So that is that is your option. Correct? Now let me go through this 125. 125, this could be written as cube root of 125 times 125. Is it okay? That is the square of 125. And then you do cube root. That means 5 times 5. And you do get 25. Exactly the same answer. So what I'm trying to show you here is there are two ways of doing all these questions, right? It's up to you which one to follow. The first way which I showed you, that is to find the nth root first. In that case, you're dealing with smaller numbers. But if you first square or cube it and then find the root, then you are dealing with bigger numbers. That is the only difference. Otherwise, in either case, you get the same answer. Okay. So I'd like you to copy these, which are cube root of minus 8 square, fifth root of minus 32 whole square, cube root of 1 to the power of 5, and cube root of 10 to the power of 6. Thank you.